Okay, so this is section C of the 2015 English exam. So the task, so for this one we've got a prompt, as we often will. How is written and visual language? So they're giving us a hint. Written and visual, make, which is them saying make sure you're talking about both. Used to attempt to persuade. So again, the key word being attempt, they're not telling you how people are forced to persuade. Uh, the audience to share the points of view of the speakers. Okay. So that should be pretty clear. We need to do written and visual. We need to talk about attempt to persuade. And we need to talk about point of view of two people. Times two. All right, so we have background information as you always will. So Big Splash is a large Australian financial institution. They, sponsor, they are sponsors an annual award event given to a noteworthy Australian volunteer organization. Stephanie Bennett, its chief CEO, presented the 2015 award before a large gathering. Matthew Nguyen accepted the award on behalf of the winning organization. The event was televised. Page 12 and 13 contain transcripts of Stephanie and Matthew's presentation. So we're taking notes. Okay, Stephanie Bennett, We'll need to know her role, so she's CEO of Big Splash, whereas Matthew Nguyen is the recipient of the award. So we know that, Matthew Nguyen, uh, recipient and the award is not yet known, so annual award for the volunteer organization. So we know so far, and those are our notes we've taken. So the event was televised. It's good to know. Uh, doesn't say where, so we're just gonna say the, that the event was televised and we might make reference to the possible ways that it was presented. So it just tells us 12 and 13 are Stephanie and Matthew's acceptance speech. So you can see, you might just look at this page and think it's got nothing useful for you, but obviously it's giving you a really clear idea of what you need to talk about. Uh, instructions for section C we've skipped, but it says uh, you need to analyze written and visual, read 12 and 13, write as coherently structured piece of prose. Uh, it'll be assessed according to criteria set out on page 14 of this book, which is that you will focus on the understanding of the ideas and points of view presented so you need to really understand what's going on and you need to analyze the way that techniques language and visual are used to present a point of view and to persuade and you need to make controlled and effective use of language so smart language good analysis and good understanding so obviously the key skills you need to know are how to analyze how to find techniques and analyze language. Good lang and visual analysis. All right, so keep that in the back of your mind. Those are the three things you're really trying to do. This is all the background information you'll need to reference in the introduction, and then you'll be able to get a lot more detail from the actual text themselves. So it's done. All right, we're gonna start off with Stephanie Bennett. So Stephanie Bennett is at the lectern in, on which is hanging a banner shown below. Okay, so it gives a bit of context. So if you just said like the cartoon from the, from the newspaper article, obviously you would lose marks straight away. So we need to refer to our acronym. So we've got form. The form of this is a speech with an associated banner. And then we'll move on from the speech from there. So distinguished guests, I'm gonna to go to a highlight here. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and volunteers from around the country. It is my great privilege to present the 10th annual Big Splash Australian Volunteered Award. So very formal introduction, sets out what she's talking about and how she's gonna do it. So that's very formal language. Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, volunteers from around the country. So she's really underlying, you know, how many people are watching, how important this company is, and how many people are contributing. 
So Big Splash offers a $100,000 donation to further the aims of Australian volunteer organisations in any field in Australia or overseas. All right, so we've got money involved. As an institution with a strong commitment to the local and global communities it serves, it is part of our corporate ethos to extend a helping hand to volunteer organisations whose work complements our vision for a better future. So this is a really very formal, again, to reuse the tone I've just explained, but it's very formal and it's very precise and very happy and safe. So the ethos, global community, corporate, helping hand, these are all sort of buzzwords that a corporation would want to be using. So, over 200 such organisations entered for the award this year. We at Big Splash were truly inspired by the various submissions. Choosing from so many worthwhile submissions was challenging and we particularly congratulate those on stage who represent the shortlisted organisations. So, truly inspired, various submissions, so it's sort of, uh, it's been quite polite and it's saying that everyone did well, congratulations to all involved, but that the ones on stage, you know, did the best without saying that in such a brusque, direct way. Uh, particularly congratulate those on stage, shortlisted organisations. All too often the work of volunteers is undervalued and un under-recognised. So that's a nice, nice bit, of under, bit of repetition, alliteration. Do you know how many Australian volunteer each year? Rhetorical question of course. A quarter of the Australian population. Statistics. Uh, I think we take this wonderful band of Australians for granted. So inclusive language. I think we take this band of Australians for granted. The website Volunteering Australia reports that five years ago the total number of hours volunteered by Australians was estimated by 713 million. So we've got, I guess, expert opinion. And we've got some more statistics. What would the numbers be today? Another rhetorical question. If the minimal hourly wage in Australia is $17, evidence, we're looking at billions of dollars of voluntary work. This is the kindness of strangers. Nice little cliche there. Inclusive language throughout. In a world that may seem preoccupied with money, it is humbling that so many people, young and old, are prepared to give their time without payment. So, in a world preoccupied, that's a nice little generalisation, maybe even appeal to fear, heading in that direction. Uh, young and old are prepared to take their time, so inclusive language without payment. We seem, however, to be becoming more and more dependent on volunteers to make our country function. So inclusive language, more and more dependent, uh, repetition, alliteration, the whole deal. Far too often these people are taken for granted, which is why Big Splash inaugurated this event. So they didn't start it, they inaugurate, inaugurated it, which is very nice formal language. Indicates it's definitely not an impromptu speech. Volunteers and their organisations are heroic. Australian heroes, nice patriotism, the connotations of heroes used throughout is really strong. What would we do without them? Rhetorical question. Consider the scope of these contributions. There would be no ambulance volunteers to attend to medical problems at major events. No one would clean up beach litter. There would be no lifesavers and no one would search for children lost in the bush. So that's of course exaggeration. Or on a more everyday level, which suggests we're probably going to an anecdote. Many elderly people live alone. So generalization. Inclusive language throughout. Thanks to volunteers, they are able volunteers. They are able to stay in their own homes. So simple solutions to a complex issue. Volunteers take them to medical appointments, shopping centres, social gatherings, listing. They deliver meals and provide company. Without volunteers, these people would be stranded. My own mother has benefited from these services. So anecdote, personal story. And when there is a disaster overseas, Australian volunteers are there to help build communities and provide help and hope to our neighbours. It would be impossible to name all those organisations that make our lives better. Consider how often we have overlooked this enorm enormous workforce as we go about our daily lives. Our Big Splash Award aims to address this lack of acknowledgement. So they're saying that they're solving many of the issues almost of the world uh, through giving out a small award of how much money was it? $100,000? Uh, seems unlikely. We, inclusive language Australians, patriotic language, are blessed with volunteers 
blessed keyword who are so much a part of the landscape that we forget that they do so much without thought of reward and we so that's praise and we to our great shame that's the opposite <laughs> attack appeal to fear appeal to you know making us feel bad so frequently disregard their contribution. We take it for granted that busy people will give up their time to coach junior sporting teams. We take it for granted that the State Emergency Services or SES volunteers will work through the night securing a roof in torrential rain. So that's a bit nice little anecdote there. Volunteers give, give to us that most valuable of life's gifts, their time, and they give it generously. Their contribution stitches together the social fabric of our nation. Unselfish acts create a ripple effect that enriches, enriches us all. Volunteers remind us that we are one society. Beautiful, nice ending there. So you can see the thing we've referred to most, the middle section was a lot of sort of statistics, expert opinions and facts. So this is kind of, I would divide this as a bit of a factual section. I might change pens. So. This is our facts section that backs it up. This is our formal introduction and very polite uh, news speak, safe, politically correct section. Uh, this is kind of praising them and their important role. It's all about how good they are, how they're heroes. Uh, we're positioned to you know, imagine how life would be without them. And then down here, again, continues on with that theme of we are blessed. So I would probably connect these two paragraphs up and consider that as some continuous focus. Bell's gone. Uh, and then that's the factual and that's the introduction. So that's how I'd break it down into three groups. So that's the first piece that we will later be comparing. All right, so that's part one we've looked at. Um, we'll just take a second to analyze the image we've been presented with as well. So. I uh, would say something like the logo takes up roughly, let's say, one-eighth of the banner on the lectern. We also see the words Australian Volunteers Awards, with the volunteers word being quite bold. And we see the two hands are embracing or helping one another, one being in a position of power and the other being in a position of subservience. In the background, we see water to suggest that it's maybe a rescue situation. There's perhaps a person on the boat helping the person below. The tagline reads, giving back to the volunteers of Australia. And that implicates, uh, that fits really well with the speech that we've got here. Uh, so basically what we see, hands, water. Uh, we're going to be making the inference that it's a boat situation or a rescue or something similar and that the connotations associated with that are one of helplessness and power from the boat and these are the sort of connotations of the images that are evoked by this image here. Uh, and the big splash is money coming out so we could link if we liked the symbol of the water here with the splashing motion pictured in the logo to show that uh, they are the ones causing the solution to the problem which is the person as we're presuming in this kind of boat symbolic scenario that we're talking about. So all put together, this refers to them helping uh, this, I guess, this paragraph or this section that we've sectioned off links to the money aspect. Uh, this is kind of pretty clearly linked to just these two things. And then the helping section links pretty clearly to the image there. So if we liked, we could break up the image and talk about an element in each paragraph, or we could give it its own paragraph if we liked, so that we could talk about the image and the significance to the wider argument and how it supports the person, the Stephanie Bennett here presenting, and how it supports the type of language she's used to support that image. <clears throat> All right, and the text continues. So the last line we just read from the last one was, volunteers remind us that we are one society and one world. We should never forget or overlook them. Big Splash certainly does not. We at Big Splash recognize the value of volunteers of Australia and we thank them. So nice inclusive language. Uh, we've got an exclamation mark. I believe it's the second one we've got uh, through the piece. Uh, and again, of course, it's inclusive. 
never forget or overlook them. It's very, very precise language, very formal, very polite. Um, we at Big Splash recognise the value of the volunteers of Australia and we thank them. And then pause for applause. Without further ado, I would like to open this envelope, dot, 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 and announce the winner of this year's Helping Hand from Big Splash. The 2015 Australian Volunteers Award is, dot, 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 Tradespeople Without Borders. Exclamation mark again. So obviously the excitement is building here. She's sort of established what she wants to say and how important they are in the process and how important volunteers are. And now she's sort of increasing the pace and the excitement associated. Then we get a little byline that explains who this person is. Matthew Newing, spokesperson for Tradespeople Without Borders. So we'll need to know that for our introduction to explain who he is. Uh, he steps forward to accept the award and amid surrounding resounding applause. On the screen behind him, the image included with their application is projected. So this is the image from their application, which again is important so that we can uh, provide a correct annotation to what they're saying and why. All right, so he starts off, thanks heaps. So straight away we've gone bang, okay, from formal to informal. So obviously a CEO of a company wouldn't be a CEO of a company for long if they started their speech with thanks heaps, big splash, cheers everyone. So they want us to be talking about colloquialisms, maybe even we could say ochreisms, you know, uh, Aussie lingo, whatever phrase you want to use for that. Uh, we didn't expect this. Speaking isn't really my strong point, but I'm totally blown away. So we see a lot of... Um, actually forgotten what that's called off the top of my head. Contractions, rather. Uh, so isn't, I'm, instead of the full form. So contractions. I want you to know that we are really grateful that you've decided to recognise... I mean, I'm not excellent myself. Uh, to recognise a fairly new organisation like ours. Fairly, again, very informal, very colloquial, uh, inclusive language. He's you know, part of the company rather than the head of, uh, and support traders who want to help. We'll use the money to continue to do so. So the money is you know, obviously less, much less formal. The connotations are a little bit, I guess, criminal. You wouldn't say to someone uh, in a polite situation that you were going to give them money. I mean, it's a grant, so that has a certain formal connotation to it, whereas money is much less so. Uh, my maid and I, so again, we're going to be talking about colloquialisms, contractions and informal language a lot. Founded Tradies Without Borders when we realised how hard some people find it to afford a plumber when their sinks get blocked. So anecdote. Not a very convincing or powerful one. Um, we offered practical to help it to anyone who needed it. Now we've expanded and we also go overseas to dig toilets. Did you know that 2.5 billion people on the planet don't have access to a loo? So that's not, geez, we've got a bit of everything there. Statistics, rhetorical question, uh, and we've got another contraction in don't. I mean, if you simply said on the planet, do not have access to a loo, that straight away sounds a lot more formal. And of course, loo is a nice um, dysphemistic phrase. Remember, euphemism is polite, dysphemism is forceful or direct. Loo is what we consider quite rude. So we would say it's dysphemistic if we wanted to show off. And to help rebuild homes after natural disasters. We have had many members now, so we can offer lots of services. Some might think we're just like trips abroad, but that isn't it. We want to make a difference, and we do. And we hope we help the Australia's reputation as a caring country too. So we threw out a vague attempt at um, patriotic language there, but it's not very precise. Um, and he's kind of included an attack from other people. So some people might think this about us which is not something he supports. I'd like to say this, so straight away, another con contraction. I'd like to say this though, Stephanie may be right when she says volunteers aren't appreciated enough, but we haven't found this. The people we help are always grateful and thank us over and over again, but we don't ask them to be grateful anyway. When your home's been wiped out in a flood, you have a right to expect someone will help you. And the same goes for someone without a proper toilet. So he's really focusing on the toilets, I mean, 
obviously he's a plumber himself, but his organization is called Tradespeople Without Borders, so he could probably include other examples. Uh, the people we help are always grateful and thank us over and over again. So you know, he's referring to the way they praise him. And nice little repetition over and over again. Those of us who have been lucky enough to live in comfort, learn a trade and make some money shouldn't ask for praise when we lend a hand to someone who hasn't had these feelings, contractions throughout. It's another contraction. It's just what a decent human being should do. Nice little appeal. Uh, and the praise we have got from seeing these things improve for people is even better than this award. So comparing the significance of the award. Uh, research actually shows that volunteers are happier than other people and we have found that this is true. So that's vague expert opinion, I guess, but without actually saying who the research is from. Volunteering is its own reward. So that's a nice little cliche for us. Thanks to all the members of Tradies Without Borders for the fun we have. Congratulations to all the other finalists and thanks again to Big Splash, applauding and cheering. So the tricky part will be breaking this down into arguments, I guess, because it's sort of a bit of a rambling all over the shop approach. Um, we're definitely going to be talking about the informality of the language um, and we'll be saying that a lot of the techniques is applied uh, not as precise as the comparison we'll be making to the other texts. So thanks heaps. Uh, this is his kind of formal, uh, well, his informal, formal acceptance portion. Then this is a little bit about the, how it was founded, what happened. And then this is kind of connecting the value of volunteering. So value of volunteering, three neat sections. This is kind of establishing this section here. And so introduction there, background of who they are, introduction of their company and what they do. And this is a thank you and a focus on how it works. Uh, the stock, what appears to be a stock image they've provided is kind of, see a lot of uh, plaid, I guess is what it's called. Uh, checks, you know, which is tr traditionally associated with kind of tradies, farmers, that sort of people. Looks like maybe jeans this person is wearing and what looks like solid black shoes or perhaps boots. Uh, we see kind of different, not as multicultural as you might uh, expect from a stock type picture like this, uh, but we see sort of different tones of skin color. So. If we compare it to the earlier image that was about one person helping another, uh, this seems to sort of suggest everyone all in together and helping out. So there's no one in a subservient position here, it, which is, fits very neatly with his argument, which is sort of saying that we help people because we're people and people should help people and it's to be expected. And it's not you know, a big company helping out a small or um, unimportant or helpless person. It's kind of we're all in it together and it's really important why. And we'll just go back to here because I didn't finish what I was writing. So we've got what a decent human being should do. So I've got appeal to, and I'm not really sure how I'll finish that. I don't know we could maybe say ethics or morality. Um, justice is, is the phrase I'm looking for. So that's his appeal to justice. And that a big part of this section is about his appeal to justice and what the right thing should be. All right. So that's my kind of how I would approach these texts. So this serves as a plan. It kind of gives you a lot of pointers about what you should be doing. It's the key information about who you should be talking about. Uh, this text was really easy to break down and the image was very convenient in the way that it could also be broken down and connected up. Uh, the next text very similarly followed quite a clear structure as well. Um, almost like they were copying each other or you know he followed after from her and sort of vaguely attempted the structure as well because he sort of did his formal thanks where she did a formal introduction then he does his kind of summary of who they are and explains some statistics to back up why it's important and why it's a factor and then lastly he goes into uh, the value 
of volunteering, which fits quite well with the previous piece's focus on the volunteers as well. So I hope that gives you kind of some ideas, some techniques you've found and how I would break down the arguments and then your job is of course to write the essay. Uh, and if you get stuck, of course, refer to the video I've also posted about uh, kind of guidelines for a language analysis essay.